The Federal Reserve System. Okay. The Federal Reserve System. We could, it was on the gold standard then, so there's gold here. Okay. And there are uh, Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve notes as a liability. And there's also bank reserves here, which are reserves. Okay. And the Fed also can run some uh, uh, credit intraday um, on its own books, something called Fedwire. That's what it's called now. Now it's electronic. Okay. Fedwire. By the way, the, um, this, this clearing, clearing system is called CHIPS now. Um, you'll, you'll read about that in, in, in Stigum. So there are two clearing systems. In the, one is private, one is completely private, and one is public, Fedwire. So what happens in the real world is the CHIPS clears first, okay, and then Fedwire clears second, okay? And Fedwire is real money, okay? This is deposits at the Fed, okay, the ultimate, the ultimate. So you can have building up of overdrafts and, and balances, do twos, do froms during the day, okay? Just like this, okay? At the end of the day, okay, if you don't have a balance, if, if you don't have a positive balance at the Fed, so you're like this net from A person, you need to borrow from a member, you need, you need, to, you need to borrow from, a, from somebody else, okay? That's what the Fed funds market is, which we're gonna talk about next time, okay? Or if, or you default, okay, or you can borrow from the Fed, borrow from the Fed, okay. So there's uh, net from A, net to B, okay. This intraday credit that could be uh, uh, built up. And one way that you could settle this is basically for B to make a loan to A through the Fed funds market. Okay, that's one way. But if, if they can't find each other or B's not willing to do that, no one's forcing them to do this, okay, then the Fed can make the loan itself. Okay. So these are discount loans. by expanding its own balance sheet. The Fed will do this, and you can see this on the balance sheet of the Fed, some of these little loans to troubled banks. You can see this on the balance sheet. They're not very large, typically. It's, you're dealing with, with troubled, troubled banks, and they're, co they're constantly dealing with troubled banks, and every, I don't know, every week one fails. You know, there's a lot of banks in the United States, so there, there's, there's a lot of this, and, they're paying, and there's whole divisions paying attention to this. It doesn't matter anything for the aggregate until there's a system of stress, just like the clearinghouse, okay? And then the Fed can and does do what the clearinghouse did, except it's all legal. It's all legal. Um, it's just expanding monetary policy. It's expanding both sides of its balance sheet in order to make there be more, more of the best money in the system. That's basically what Bernanke is doing. He's, just, he's, he's buying, buying mortgage-backed securities. That's what he's doing. That's, that's QE right there. Okay? So he's not just making loans to banks. He's actually buying securities from whoever, whoever has them okay, in, the, in the economy as a whole. This is not what the, the New York Clearinghouse would ever do. Okay? It's, a, it's, a, it's a club. Okay? The Fed is, has more people, a member of, of, of its club. Um, more, more member banks to begin with, okay, throughout, throughout the country. Um, but it also is willing to, to as in, in times of crisis, to basically lend to broker dealers and buy mortgage backed securities. Um, that's what it is. That's what it has been doing during this continuing set of problems. So there's a, there's a sort of strict analogy between a private clearinghouse and a public clearinghouse here. They, may, they run on the same principles. They have different sets of membership, different rules, different priorities, but the actual mechanics are very much the same. 